Okay, I think that's quite enough of that. That that might be a one and done. Rico, you're rubbing your chin. Are you okay? <laughs> no. We're gonna go ahead and slam it. <laughs> the old jam it or slam it. Yeah, I slam that. One. Old school. Um, we have a loaded show today. I, I'm I'm actually quite excited because it's gonna bounce between the NFL and college. We have to talk about Dan Campbell. I've got some audio from the morning show. We're going to get to it at three. My question is, if you pay a lot for a new car, but you don't drive it, what was the point? We'll get to that at three o'clock. But Rico has news you can use (laughs) because there's so much happening in college football and none of it has to do with Mel Tucker. No, no. Mike uh, Gene Smith, Ohio State Athletic Director, is in front of Congress right now. He is believing, he's hoping for a federal NIL law that would include a national NIL standard so that there is consistency across the country to ensure a level playing field. Novel concept. Requiring registrations for NIL agents, standardizing NIL contracts, uh, prohibiting recruits from inducements, meaning paying recruits off NIL registry that brings transparency to the marketplace because he said, why? Well, there's a new thing that's happening now when it comes to recruiting. And this is Gene Smith, not me. Gene Smith testifies in favor of federal NIL legislation saying recruits are asking for $5,000 just to visit. This has become Common practice. You want me to come to your school, coach? Give me five grand. I'll take a look around. No guarantee I'm going to commit here, but I'll look for 5G. I wrote this on the show sheet, and I'm not trying to be funny. Where's the bottom of the chili pot here? Like, when when do we dead cat bounce? When, when do we actually find the bottom of the Mariana Trench that is college football right now? Rico Beard saying now, players are attaching an invoice to, wait for it, visit. Mm-hmm. You don't even know if you want the player. The player doesn't even know if they want you. They're invoicing you, essentially turning themselves into escorts. Oh, no. But I'm assuming these are for the prime players. So you know you want this player. He knows you want him. But you got to pay me just to come take a look at your campus. So it begs this question to me. And this is where I want the people involved. Because I don't have this answer. A part of the reason I am falling out of love with this sport, well, there's a myriad of them. But this is one. The idea that leadership threw their hands in the air like parents that didn't feel like parenting anymore... Kid takes the car whenever they want, comes home whenever they want. Kid does crack in the living room. They're doing, I don't care. Yeah, just make sure you do it in the house. Don't go outside. Mom and dad are on a two-week cruise to Greece. Do whatever you want. That's the NCAA. So my question to fans is this. When will we actually see real oversight so that the rational portion of society can actually care about this sport again? Right, because here's... Well, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Mike. I didn't ask that. Oh, no, no. Answer my question. When? Ten years from now. Ten years? You're not smart enough to legislate yourself. So, hey, who can do the legislation for us? How about we go to Congress because they get so much done there every day. You're now asking them to do your job. That means it's going to be a long time. It's not that hard to do. You simply get some smart people in the room and you figure it out. And let me be clear. If you have standardized rules that say every visit you go on, you are paid a fee. I don't have a problem because it's collectively bargained. You would have a standardized structure. I don't have a problem with players getting money. My issue resides in what there are no rules anywhere. It's utter chaos no it's it's, i think it's part of the i'll be honest with you i think it's part of the reason why harbaugh won't be at u of m much longer hate to tell you you want to know why that guy might be up out of there this i think it's a lot of people mike not just a harbaugh thing but i think a lot of your older coaches i don't 
enjoy doing this anymore because this new aspect, I have no rules. Oh, wait, wait, I did this. Wait, that's against the rules. Wait, I'm in trouble for this now? But nobody said I couldn't do this. Here's where we are. You have this brand new thing, this technology, all of this stuff, and no one knows how to use it. So we're kind of writing the rules as we go along. That's a problem. I'm also offended that this is in front of Congress. I mean, Congress is a collection of losers. They don't get anything done for this country. But right. hey, let's take a time out so Gene Smith can talk NIL. Wait, and Congress wanted to hear what he had to say. And if you have to go to Congress to get something fixed, you're dead. You're already effed. So I want to ask the question. When will we see actual oversight of NIL and college football? I just need you to answer. It's a simple question. You could say one year, tomorrow, a decade, never. I don't know. My answer to you is I don't know. And I don't want to hurt the players, and I don't want to hurt the schools. But anything. Like in the NFL, we do have rules. Okay? We don't like all of them. We love some of them. We have rules. The rules allow us to understand what we're watching. Hey, this player could be a free agent or a franchise guy or demands a trade. These are all collectively bargain things that we get to understand. Mm -hmm. We make a decision as a fan. I like this. I don't like this, but I, I get it. Nothing in college football makes any sense. No, it doesn't. And you know when you'll get your rules, Mike? When something happens that is so out of the box that people are going to be like, okay, enough. When all of a sudden every top player in the nation transfers to the University of Tulsa and Tulsa wins a national title because all of a sudden somebody out there struck oil and is just handing out checks to every top player. And now you're saying, well, well, they shouldn't be that good. And we got well, now we're gonna have to make some changes. That's what you're gonna have to see. The big boys, it's it's not it's not ironic that Gene Smith is there. Ohio State's a big boy. They want to keep it where only the big boys eat at the table. NIL and all of this stuff is making if you look at college football now, the sad reality is it's actually what we've been asking for for years, where it's a little more diverse. It's not just the same five schools all the time. Well, you don't, there's like about, I would say, 12 schools now that you could say they could win it all. Oh, man, please. No, no, Mike, what I'm saying, there's no dominant team where it, it used to, where it used to, it was Georgia or it was Alabama, and you just knew in the end it's just going to be a collision course with yeah. those now two. Now the new guy at the table is Texas, Florida State. That's not new. No, no, Mike, but the fact that, you can make a case for a lot of teams. You can make a case for Michigan. You can make a case for a lot of different teams that could win it. Whereas before, if you said that, people would be like, All right, yeah, that's not going to happen. Anytime you're going to make a case for a team from the North, I'm just going to remind you, it's been 20 years. Huh? Teams from North don't win that. No, no. But the fact is now with all this NIL stuff, some players are saying maybe a Travis Hunter, number one player in the country, he goes to Jackson State. Not Florida State, but Jackson State. Now he's in Colorado. Congratulations. Rico's found the one example. Tremendous. It's How about the thousand that still go to the same places? No, no, Mike. The same places are there, but you're seeing the erosion. Like Clemson refuses to play this game. Right. And, and they're, they're falling apart. Right. That's the only reason, though. You just proved my point. They're not participating. They didn't. They didn't. Parody didn't take them out. No, no. Dabo self righteousness did. But you're seeing players not just go to the same four schools. Now it's starting. Okay. To, no, it's starting to spread out to maybe twelve schools, and sooner it'll go to more and more schools because you know why? This school happened to pony up a half a million dollars. Listen, so guess what, son? Then bra the, listen. Bottom line there. is, if you want to have a meaningful discussion about college football, you need to talk about breaking away from the NCAA. You need to talk about having whatever's left of college football, have a real collectively bargained agreement, yeah. have rules, pay the players, do whatever you like. But this whole idea of what's good over here isn't good over here, and they do it this way, they do it this And if we're getting to the point now where we're paying players to go on a college visit, then it's got to be standardized. Mm -hmm. It has to be. And the players are sitting there saying, well, didn't you just sign a billion dollar TV deal? What do you mean I can't get five grand? Well, I'll tell you why you can't get five grand because nobody knows you're any damn good. See, that's the laugh factory of all this. I never had a problem paying players who were good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Shadur Sanders arrives and he's good. You want to sign a contract? Hey, do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, Jackson Smith and Jigba last year in a hypothetical world returns to school and gets paid a legitimate sum of money. Mm -hmm. Kids now, hey, hate to break it to you. You know what's happening on your favorite college campus right now? You got kids who aren't playing. Bitching about money. 
I could take it one step further, Mike. You got kids who are only not playing, but they just got there two weeks ago, and they probably make more than everybody else on the team, and they're not playing because they're either a true freshman or they're that transfer portal kid that you absolutely had to have who got beat out in spring practice. The whole thing's backwards. So the question is, when are you going to see rules? That, I mean, guys, that's not a hard question to answer. And don't be calling this phone trying to argue about whether players should or shouldn't be paid. I'm not interested. I have no problem with them being paid. What I have a problem with is all of these allegedly smart people acting stupid with the babe in the woods routine, running to Congress. So just tell me when there's rules and when I can make a decision as a consumer whether to care or not. That's all I'm asking you. 248-539-9797. Kenny, when will there be rules? That might be the answer, though. You started caring. I think when it affects the almighty dollar, that's when they'll start actually putting guardrails in place, when it affects viewing numbers, when it affects ad dollars. Because other than that, what's their incentive? If people are going to keep watching, everything's going to stay the same. Because it destroys their sport. It does. So when it does destroy the sport to the point where people can't watch it anymore, where it becomes so unrecognizable from what it used to be. Oh, so you so you do what people do in this business. You're reactive, not proactive. That's Got what it. they're going to be. Right, until all of a sudden you become professional boxing. What about no the NCAA says that they're going to be proactive? But see, that's reactive. where they just break away from the NCAA. The NCAA could have purview over everything except football. Why? Because this isn't college football anymore. Oh, sure, it's Wolverines football loosely presented by the University of Michigan. But it really has nothing to do with it anymore. Michigan, you know, it could be Spartan football brought to you by Rico Beard and loosely loose association with Michigan State University. Look, if we're going to do it, you may as well do it the whole way. Why do the players go to class? They're not interested in it. They're not here to play school. No, they've made it so easy now. You just take classes online. You How do you think while Michigan you're on the graduates, guys, in two years? I got news for you. They're not in the Ross Business School. No. Okay, we're designing tracks for players. Yeah. They're, they're the equivalent of no-show classes. Yep. So the point I'm making is how far do you want to take it? But get to the end point, take it there, show me the rules, and let me identify whether I want to participate anymore. Because this whole – we are just dead cat bouncing and reestablishing the new bottom. Mm -hmm. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll get your calls. We got Dan Campbell audio for 3 o'clock. We have to have a conversation. Because daddy bought a new toy uh, and they refused to unwrap it. And I'm really confused by what I heard.